This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway. Supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza, sliceonbroadway.com. And listeners like you, support this show at patreon.com slash awesomecast. Sidekick Media Services. We are your sidekick in business for social media, video production, and more. Find out more at sidekickmediaservices.com. Guys, it is time to get geeky, get awesome. It is the Awesome Cast episode 438. Hi, Mike Sorg and Sorgatron on the Twitter here in the Sorgatron Media Studios in the Beachview neighborhood of Pittsburgh, PA. Ready to get geeky with you. Also, getting geeky with me is John Chichilla. He's the gadget guru of Big Bank International Esquire. I am hopefully not pixelated on your podcast. No, yeah, he's got the shirt. He's got the shirt that's testing your compression tonight <laughs> if you're with us on video. Uh, is it audio, you maybe can hear the static on <laughs> the, the, the visual static coming across your ear holes. But uh, we should, you know, what we should do. We, I should get like a green shirt, and we should green screen me. Oh, did you see the just one? the shirt and make me like a, just a big everything's just static. Did you see the one with the, the wrestler Brohemoth that had the green um the green hoodie, and they were about to cut a promo, and I'm just like, hey man, you should probably not be in this promo. <laughs> <laughs> i have not i i'm not a big wrestling person either no, i mean well just on my feet ah. so I, I there's a there's just a guy in a big green hoodie posing on a green screen so you can have fun with it uh so there's that anyways uh katie is on assignment um um testing out the laser guns tonight i am so upset that i can't participate oh in you can't fun. get into that i'm going out tomorrow night i know i was yeah. invited and I got. I have. I have things to do. Uh, rogue. Uh, ro- laser. Rogue. Rogue. Laser. What was it called again? Ro- uh, rogue. Laser grounds. Is that. Is that right, producer Missy? I think that's what they're called. Uh, She's like. She just. You just woke her up. Oh. Okay. It's the, it's the scare house. <laughs> it's the scare house. Um. Yeah. Rogue laser gra- grounds. If you want to look that up on the Facebook, uh, they're doing th- some test runs the next couple nights, and I think they officially launched this Thursday. So. You see, she's not even here. We're still giving a shout out to the stuff she's working on. So, you know, she does all the fun stuff. She does all the fun stuff. So uh, I don't know. what They we're need doing. to put it in VR so I can participate from home. There you go. Oh, it would, no, we get you one of those like the the iPads. that are like the remote presence deals. And you're just <laughs> you're I want it. I want it, I want it strapped on to one of those things. that's like a dog. One of those dog robots. Mm hmm. Because then I can be super fast in the laser. These are all great ideas. These are all amazing ideas. Anyways, this is the Awesome Cast. Please check out everything at awesomecast.com, where you can uh, subscribe and rate us on your favorite podcast app and watch video versions on Facebook and YouTube. Hit us, uh, email us at awesomecast at sogertronmedia.com, and that's where you can hit up uh, producer Missy. If you're interested in joining us here in studio uh, to uh, hang out and uh, watch the recording in person here, uh, and also, uh, if you are interested in advertising opportunities to help support the show and get, uh, your word out there to our audience. And you can also join us every Tuesday, uh, at the awesome cast Facebook page at 7 PM Eastern time. And, uh, of course, uh, uh <laughs> Start time, depending on when the sun goes down, because of this giant window out here. But anyways, uh, if you're on any other uh, feed, because we are on the Sorgatron Media streaming network as well, and if you're catching us on Periscope or Twitch or somewhere else, the live chat room is that we were paying attention to is over on the Facebook page, if you can join us there. Please join the, rest, the awesome cast uh, Facebook group. There's a lot of great discussions there. The guys uh, uh, contribute a lot of stories that we'll be touching base on here in the show. And if you want to support the show on our Patreon page, if you get value out of the show, patreon.com slash awesomecast. Thank you to our friends at the Coffee Club $5 level, Matt Weller and John Diggy DeGore, and at the Fan of the Show dollar level, Michael Fedor uh, as well. So let's get into our awesome things of the week. And uh, we got a couple of things going on here. Chilla, what is yours? I, I was hearing some of the audio over there. I'm going to pull up the, the video and see what's going on here. If you uh, click the link there, uh, I think it was it like a PlayStation announcement. Yeah, they did like kind of the Nintendo Direct thing, I guess, right? Yeah, they did. And I, I didn't get to see it, but I read some of the output from it. Mm-hmm. And I'm, I'm interested in seeing how these were. I hope they keep this up because I feel like it keeps the the interest going throughout the year versus waiting for the big, huge announcements. Mm-hmm. But they announced 
Iron Man VR, which they claim has been two years in the making. Jeez. Um, it, not, by the way, not actual uh, uh, <laughs> gameplay game footage they're saying here. So I don't know what the hell the game's supposed to look like. At the end well, of I'm guessing party. that's gameplay footage. I, yeah. I think what they're saying is when they kind of show the guy standing there. Yeah. Like he's suited up. Because they kind of depict the idea of like, you know, hey, I'm holding the thing and uh, well, I guess into like the, the, the screen part where you, you see the, 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 the overlay. Yeah, like you're out. not going to see yourself in the helmet. Mm. It seems like it's more open than what you expect the, the Iron Man interface to look like from yeah. what we've seen in the movies. Yeah, but they, I mean, they can only do so much. Yeah, exactly. I'm guessing. Um, as a PlayStation owner, I, this now makes me want to think about getting a PlayStation the VR. VR. Chachi sold his. Like he had Not it. To he, me. Got, he got rid of it. Well, and I feel like it. it's too early on. I, the interesting thing, I, I think I saw like four PlayStation VR announcements. I feel like buying it that early on, you were definitely in an early adopter phase. Mm. Even when you look at the the gear VR stuff, it works. Mm. It's not amazing. No, it's not. Like mm. the, yeah, it's not the utmost crazy, um, you know, experience out there but it was just like it's a foot in the door right mm-hmm. and, and even the well, playstation is a very good one and a very powerful one but but you know it's still kind of you know it's it's not going to be that f- it's not going to be as good as like putting all the money into an oculus yeah. or, a, or a vibe or something right i so, would i would think not yeah. i'm interested i don't know what the specs are on the actual like the display in there do you get that like the it looks like you're looking through a screen door mm-hmm. like it's kind it, of it, it, it seems cross hatching well, visually wise it seemed um comparable to my experience at least with the first gen oculus mm-hmm. and vive from the little bit i got to use the playstation one so okay. i mean it's i think it's completely serviceable um it's just you know it's plugged into the playstation it's a pc so it's a little more you know uh, fine-tuned probably right the, yeah the interesting thing too though that surprised me was so the playstation has the original PlayStation 4, the thin one, the Pro. I think there's another one. Mm-hmm. There's three or four of them. It works across all of them. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, it can keep up. I'm, I'm, I'm interested in playing. Oh, that's awesome. So I think, I think I'll be picking it up. So my awesome thing of this week is space. I had the space book last night. I, I just I took a night off of wrestling last night and, and, and uh, decided to go see the Apollo 11 documentary. Um, which they they had redone uh, a lot of the footage, like they they had uh, restored a lot of the footage, a lot of the original seventy millimeter footage from the Apollo Eleven mission, and they basically took you through. Like the narrator is the mission narrator that that uh, you know talked about everything, you know, you know going over the the process. It seems um, so. It, it was really cool to see that, and then I kind of had the bug, so I watched after watching Apollo Eleven, I watched the sequels, uh, Apollo Thirteen. And Apollo 18. Um, Apollo 18 is the found footage movie from 2011. That <laughs> suppose that we went to to the moon one more time and found aliens, and that's why we didn't go back. Uh, but anyways, um, but no, it was cool to watch those after watching like the real footage, and then seeing like you know when you saw like okay, this is what it looks like out the window. It was like no, that's actually what it looked like out the window, right? And see that you know that that it was like on par with that, and it's not mm-hmm. just. Uh, it's not like you know Armageddon, <laughs> you know. What's not thinking about how that goes? It's not uh, Transformers: Dark Side of the Moon. No, it, but also, it, it, and I keep forgetting about this. And, and I think when we talk about space and stuff, like maybe we don't think about the details. Like I, I didn't realize that we have not been to the moon since I think 1970, after the Apollo 17 mission. Um, well, and didn't they say something like we don't have, we don't have a space program with the like rockets and equipment what Potter, where it would take us. I, I, yeah. I saw partner. Potter I was uh, like randomly. Uh, was messaging on Facebook. I, I don't know if it was even in our group about how well, like the U S does not have a rocket to get us anywhere. Right. Now. And won't, and won't for at least the next 10 years. Nothing is ready to go. Right. Uh, the space, the space shuttle ended in, what was it? 2011. I think it was, 
But, but you what know, what about SpaceX? Can we get up there? The, the suppose, yeah, SpaceX can. We basically, if we, if, if America needed to get up there, as it is, we're already going up with cosmonauts and everything to get to the International Space Station. Um, but like, I, I started reading through like the history of that and and kind of those timelines. Like, we had the space shuttle missions, and that turned into the Hubble telescope. There was the Mir space station that the Russia Russia had. There was the International Space Station. Uh, that, that's still going and will be for at least a few more years now. There was the robot we sent to Mars. There was there, they, but the other yeah, there's robots. So so we've sent robots to the moon and Mars and everything, of course. Um, but you know we haven't done man travel outside of. And so it was I think China and India even is looking to get a manned mission to the moon uh by 2025 it's a lot of green screen work to get us to the moon. <laughs> that's right yeah trust me um the special effects budget is ridiculous but it would like just to kind of like sit down and kind of take the context of where that space program is right um you know and 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 also i'm fascinated you know again watching something like the apollo 11 we left a lot of trash up there guys <laughs> you know not even counting like all the satellites and things we've done ever since but just like on the way we just left a lot behind Right. Like floating around or like just floating around. Like you, you, you got, you get halfway there, you let go of, you know, part of the capsule. They actually have to separate the lunar module from the return capsule and flip it around and reattach it to proceed. Is that like landing the plane and Top Gun on Nintendo? Yes. I, uh, I can't uh, imagine it being too exactly easy. Exactly like that. You know, except it's in space and floating and stuff. But um, but yeah, it, you, you know the, those kinds of things, and then they and then they get halfway here and they let go of the lunar module, and then you know, and then the the, the rest of the uh, uh, you know capsule comes off, and and we just have that little bit after that, you know, and some of the rockets were probably recoverable in the ocean and everything that went up initially, um, probably not as much as the space shuttle program, but but even looking at like like what NASA is actually working on it, and and. This is not up there, I don't think yet. They're uh, currently in the testing phases and we're doing doing a, a lot of that kind of stuff. But um, they so the the process that NASA is working on now is this uh, Orion um, this Orion uh, uh, deep space travel ship that they're they're looking to use. Which basically they get up there, they load people on this thing, and then they're going to put a lunar outpost out by the moon, hence lunar outpost. Um, and this is going to be pretty much kind of a way station for, you know, whatever eventually becomes like our Mars missions um, or, or whatever else we want to do. Or at least like a, you know, a, um, a rest stop on the way to uh, lunar walks and everything like that. Right. Um, you know, basically kind of an extension of what they're doing on the International Space Station. But again, like around the moon, um, you know, this is, uh, you know, several years in the making uh before we're going to have something like this but it's like you know to see that there is kind of a roadmap that is partner saying you are all wrong i'm all wrong so we don't have a crew launch vehicle to low earth orbit let alone heavy launch vehicle okay we're missing the tooling expertise the nasa budget is about one percent of of the budget necessary um yeah he's he's poo-pooing your we're getting back up there well, I'm I'm just But about, I see Canada's coming to the rest of Canada is coming to the moon with us. Um <clears throat> Canada's carrying the other ninety nine percent. This is just poking around and seeing what projects were out there and stuff. So um but uh I, but did, what what was the this, I don't think this is this is still like a couple of years out. But he right? was saying earlier, wasn't it like we're not even ten years close. Really? That's what I think. I think what's saying. gonna end up happening is they're just gonna we're just gonna <laughs> rocket strap. <laughs> Not to use that term directly with, uh, you know, SpaceX and things like that. You know? What was the thing that Red Bull did where they sent the, like the hot air balloon up into, I mean, that went up pretty darn high. Was that? Wasn't there, there was something where they, it was like sponsored by Red Bull. It was like the guy in the capsule. Oh, yeah. Like a year ago or something. Yeah, right? it was a couple years ago. Yeah. Um. He's yeah. He's he's updating us, saying that like you know, the NASA budget is about one percent of our overall budget. Uh, we don't have a crewed crewed launch vehicle into low or- orbit, um, let alone a heavy launch vehicle. We're also missing the tooling expertise, and, and that's been an issue. And that's been an issue. So, um, but uh, but I don't know. Just just looking through and kind of seeing the history and kind of updating on that. Just kind of getting the context of everything too. Um, that was kind of a cool deep dive for me. So. All right, uh, we need to get Potter on. Just tell us about the space program now. 
We should. He should have. We should do like a five minute story every week. Yeah, there you at go. the beginning. This week in space. Uh, <laughs> so, but anyways, uh, well, you see, I, I dived into a little bit of history, and and thank you for correcting me. But a lot of people get a lot of history wrong, and that's why Professor Buzzkill is here to help us out. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, history myths, you know, things that people have uh, 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 unknowingly, you know, said like, you know, hey. Uh, Churchill apparently gets misquoted a lot, a whole lot. Uh, so, uh, but you know, Professor Buzzkill is there to help us uh, learn from that history, and uh, with his, you know, with his uh, uh, learning history, entertaining and humorous through his blog and podcast. You can go explore it at professorbuzzkill.com. And make sure you subscribe to his uh, YouTube page as well, because there's a lot of content that's going to be on the way over there, uh, including uh, video versions of some of his latest podcasts, including Jesse James and the Civil War, Irish Things That Are Actually British, and The Making of the Non-Smoker. So go check that out. A lot of great back catalog there as well. Uh, Support him on Patreon as well, especially if you're already supporting us. Just go ahead and add him to the list there uh, at uh, ProfessorBuzzKill.com. All right, let's take a look at what's going on with you guys over on the Awesome Cast Facebook group. Uh, first of all, uh, Amanda Narcissi, um, I, you know, this is one of those apps that I've downloaded and never really got to load up and play a whole lot with. Um, she has been playing with a Leo AR program. Have you played with this? I, I have also downloaded it, but have not gotten to play with it. It's always the problem, right? <laughs> I got a lot of things on my phone that I haven't really dived into. Um, but she sent us a video and I'm just waiting to load here real quick. And, uh, there's a little dancing, you know, a very appropriate, it's a dancing astronaut. <laughs> it's a dancing astronaut. It looks like it's doing one of those, uh, uh, and it's to the, um, it's to a, uh, uh, Spider-Man video, uh, from into, into the Spider-Verse that's going on there. It looks like it's in her living room there or something. But it looks like it. It looks yeah, but it looks like it's the video is like posted behind it. Yeah, the so video's kind of cool. the video's kind of floating behind it, and it's uh, dancing to it. Here, let me see if I can see what the audio sounds like there. Oh, I can't find it again too. I don't think we connected that yet. Um, nope, it's muted. That's why. So, but that's cool. That's cool. And it's kind of like um, it, it, it's not on its own thing. Like it, it's it's got its own um platform. It looks like. Instead of just like uh, on your floor, mm-hmm. so well, cool. I'm guessing they can overlay any. I'm guessing it can overlay any texture on a surface. Mm-hmm. So I'm guessing is that on our coffee table? Maybe yeah, it looks like it says floating above our coffee table there. So, um, so that's a free app, and you can play with that. And it's called Leo AR. I think it's got a. I think it's got a picture of a it, lion. It reminds me of some of the Google Pixel phone camera AR stuff that feel like didn't catch on didn't they they did stuff with star wars i think they may have yeah, done some stuff yeah with Marvel. Like, it is, this is like another another company that's trying to do something like this too mm-hmm. so uh speaking of ar there was one here let me pull up this one by uh, uh our friend doug over at should i drink that and yin's love barbecue so there's this one where burger king uh is using an ar app to set their rivals ads on fire like does it Play the video and there's just random flames. Yeah, in barely. Yeah, you just if you see another ad, it's just it's just a big a big bit of fire coming off of it. So and, does it look uh, like like the the like it's like on a piece of paper that's on fire, or does it try to build flames into? Oh. It's, it's building flames into it and then it reveals a Burger King ad. That's <laughs> if you pretty see funny. another ad. So and it's apparently a feature on the Burger King app itself. I, I, and this like, and I've used the Burger King app. Like, they have coupons and stuff on there, and I probably go to Burger King far too much. But uh, that's that's a pretty fun little thing that they've added on there. Um, so, uh, you know, Burger King is always doing kind of weird stuff like that, right? So, um, <laughs> we uh, Brandon uh, mentioned we'll get into a little bit of the Apple stuff, but uh, Brandon was talking about uh, he's excited about the. Uh, apple arcade game subscription and again this is we we're talking about a lot of the apple stuff before the show but um this is going to be um apple's kind of their own like game pass but they are directly supporting the people making these games right like these were these were these are games that are like 
you know, kind of uh, uh, indie games, kind of like, you know, they, they, they talked about, you know, supporting games kind of in the vein of Monument Valleys and Alto's Adventure and things like that. What, what I really like about this is there's so many, I do download a lot of free games and then get quasi addicted to them. Mm-hmm. I'm not big on the paying, like, buy tokens, buy the donuts in the Simpsons yeah. game, buy this, yeah. buy that. But I do appreciate this where I'm getting a higher quality game without the gimmicks to try to get me to do a bunch of in-app purchases. I would rather just for this type of gaming, I would rather just subscribe or I'd rather be like Fortnite where it doesn't give me an advantage to pay. Mm -hmm. So I I like this concept and I, I hope... I hope I saw a couple of the Lego games in the list today. Oh, really? I, I hope they bring all of the Lego. I saw Sonic Racing was coming to, okay. the, to the list. Um, I hope they hit a lot of those retro games. And this is where I think they should partner with like a, a, a Nintendo mm-hmm. and Switch back catalog. But um, I do like the idea of I don't have to get pay a dollar 99 here and 399 there and 599 mm-hmm. over here and, and there's a few games i want to drop a, like i was playing inside which is from the people that did um oh limbo and really enjoyed the game got through the demo thing and it's one of those in-store you know hey drop seven bucks on it i just never got around to it mm-hmm. right um i don't and i don't even mind that where it's like the mario yeah, you play the first like five levels. Play the first then... five levels for free, and for ten bucks, we'll give you the rest of them. Yeah. I'm totally cool with that. It's where, hey, you got to keep paying and paying and paying and paying yeah, to you... enjoy the game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, that's that's kind of an issue. Um, it, you know, I'm I'm looking at that list now that you mentioned Lego. Uh, Lego's involved. Konami, Sega, like you mentioned, Giant Squid. I've heard of Cartoon Network that does interesting mobile games a lot of times. Uh, let's see, Miss Walker, Boss's Studio, some others. Snowman, which of course is an Alto's Adventure, uh, and they 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 have a few games coming out. Um, you know, the Alto's Adventure, Alto's Odyssey uh, games. I love you know where you're snowboarding, mm-hmm. right? Um, or sandboarding, or whatever the case may be. So, but but I love those kind of like weird, different, quirky mobile games, and I love the idea that it's um you know hopefully this means there will be more for me to play on my Apple TV as well. Right. And we were talking before the show about I really think they need to to partner up with, you know, PlayStation and get better controller support across the iOS platform on the iPad and iPhone, which they would then help transition people over to the Apple TV for the bigger TV experience. I mean, when you think about it, right. There's so many of those vendors that have like the clip on style controller that pretty much turns all of your dice devices combined into the switch. Mm-hmm. I, I really think they could make a run at this market if they do it right. Mm-hmm. Um, we did have a request uh, from Brian Crawford. I think he's looking at uh, uh, potential new cars. Um, does anyone use car- Apple CarPlay and do you like it? We've talked about this I in the love past. It. We love it. I, I look for, I try to look for it in my rent cars. I, I specifically grabbed the Chevy Malibu hoping there was Apple CarPlay in it. And there wasn't this time. And I was very sad. Um, we should do like a a hangout on the road with me and CarPlay. Ooh. Or cut in. We might be able to do a recording and then cut it in. Mm-hmm. Uh, just the voice to text, integrated podcasts. Mm-hmm. The one thing I do wish, and this they'll probably never bring it, but I wish that I could stream videos to the the, the in-car display. That's the one thing. That seems dangerous. It seems, and I, you know what? Make it where when the car is in park, I can put throw a video up there. Mm-hmm. But if it's in drive, I can't. Because mm-hmm. there are times where I'm like, oh, I have ten minutes. I wouldn't mind watching this YouTube video up on the screen in the car, um, where I would put it to use. In mm. uh, we completely like you know maybe waiting waiting for our, our order at Sonic or something. We'll, we'll, we'll like watch trailers on the car, like h- hoarder, you mm-hmm. know, uh, with it going over the Bluetooth. So yeah, no, that would, it's, I know it's like kind of anti-car to say like, Hey, let's throw videos on here. Right. Um, well, I've seen people that have like the nine to 13 inch screen with like a DVD player in their car. I don't see what the big deal is. Mm-hmm. 
and like I said, make it where when the car's in park, you can stream video, but when the car's in any other gear, you can't. I'm totally cool with that. Mm -hmm. um, but I, <clears throat> everything about it, I mean, it just, it's so seamless. The UI translation to the in-dash display, the touchscreen, everything just, it just works. And I, I've played around, Android Auto is nice, and most of those head units anymore now do both. At least the ones that usually come from the manufacturer. Um, the Android Auto stuff's nice. Um, it just, it works really well. I, I have, mine you have to wire in, so I have to tether. I can't go wireless, but that doesn't bother me at all. Mm -hmm. um, One less thing to worry about. Yeah. You know. Like and everything... Like if you do pick up your phone and look, like if you picked up your phone in the car and it was tethered and you go into messages, messages pops up on the dash. If I put the phone down, there's a home button. I hit the home button and I get all my iOS apps that are CarPlay enabled up there. So it, it just works really well. Doug shared a pretty cool uh, library. Uh, the Bethlehem Public Library. I, I imagine this is Bethlehem, PA. Um, has a, a new self-service studio um, and, you know, for podcasting video. I see they're using a very similar Canon Vixies that we use for some of our uh, productions as well. Not, 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 so, not as many, you know, this one, but, um, but it, it, it's a pretty cool uh, setup they have going on there. And they're saying that the Bethlehem, studio, uh, Bethlehem Library here um, you know, has had a studio space of some sort since 1981, and this is just the latest kind of upgrade for it. I love this. You know, we we do have. Um, I know I was talking with people a couple years ago with our own Carnegie Library. At least in Main Branch, they have a lot of recording equipment uh, like this as well. So uh, you know, kind of a you know that public access you know accessibility uh, kind of situation. And and there's like a nice uh, if you're not with us on video, uh, there's a nice like curtain set with you know a plant and two chairs. It looks like you know uh, the the good morning show or something right that you can use um some some cool studio spaces in there uh so you know uh, i know doug was i think uh, uh there was a comment in there about um you know wishing there was like something like this here but like i said i think there is something similar in um some of the carnegie libraries where they do have some production equipment and everything too plus we do have pc tv and we have things like studio me um across town that are these kind of turnkey situations uh, as well. So there are a lot of options. It's here. a pretty cool concept, though, because they've tried to make it easier for the the novice. Mm -hmm. It's There's one button to record, one button to stop, and a USB port to copy your video off. I don't know. It's pretty cool. And they have 10 laptops that can be checked out, and they're equipped with Premiere Elements. Ooh. So, so at least it's like, like a get, pretty get nice started. setup. <clears throat> yeah, at least get you started on something like an Elements or something, right? So, well, you know, something else that gets us started. You know, our good friends at Slice on Broadway got us started uh, making sure we're not going hungry as we podcast here at seven o'clock at night here, right here in the Pittsburgh area, supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza here in Beachview, Carnegie, PA, the East End, and PNC Park, home of the Pittsburgh Pirates. Uh, good to have those guys on board supporting this show. For so long here, go check them out. It's good stuff. It's good Pittsburgh pizza, and uh, and 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 thank you, thank you to them for supporting the show. Get my little Instagram account, some of those images at the bottom there. Uh, so go check them out, sliceonbroadway.com, or visit your local Slice on Broadway. Okay, uh, what else do we have here for this week? Speaking of video games, I see Con Castlevania and Contra are uh, coming to the modern consoles with the 50th anniversary releases. I thought this was cool. I was looking at the list. Um, they're kind of all over the place. It's not like, hey, here's Contra 1, 2, 3, Castlevania 1, 2, 3. It's like Castlevania, Castlevania 3. And then like, hey, here's Castlevania 2 from the Game Boy. And of course, it's bringing <laughs> them all on for, um, you know, the, the the Switch and the Playstations and the modern consoles as well. Uh, so cool to see that that, that those classics. You know, I, I, I grew up on the on the Contra on the Nintendo was like one of the coolest games that I could never get past the first level. But you play it all the time, right? Yeah, I'm 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 confused because the the anniversary collection of Contra 
will be an eight title collection. Yes. And they did not reveal all. But the they titles. didn't reveal all eight. I'm like, no, 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 no. wait a minute. Contra, Super Contra, Super C, Contra 3. Mm-hmm. There's four. So we get half, half For whatever of what they're going to be. Give me Operation C from the Game Boy that I played <laughs> too much of, right? So, you know, and so there's, there's some good collections there. And they're also going to do an arcade classics that also is going to include. Again, amongst others, uh, Haunted Castle, Ajax, Gradius, Gradius 2, Life Force, Thundercross, Scramble, and Twin B. Actually, I might be all of them for that one. So, um, again, nice re-releases that Konami's doing. And this is for the 50th anniversary of Konami. And you never know. Maybe some of those would be included in that arca- <coughs> you know, Apple Arcade, you would hope, right? Well, will they bring it to Apple Arcade? We'll you never know. A lot of these, are they going to... Are they going to do any of these if you're just the Nintendo Online? Mm-hmm. Like, are we going to get some of the back catalog from that? I don't know. It would be interesting to see what they do. So, you know, we, we've done that. This person does not exist. This cat does not exist. Did you see this startup does not exist? Well, it, this that's where I found this. If you go to a website called This X Does Not Exist, this is all of those uh, GAN the generative adversarial networks the gan uh, you know networks um this podcast does not this exist. podcast did not exist I, so there's a lot of them in here now there's this url does not exist this resume so let's see let's see this startup does not exist let's click on that and again it's this this is generating this on the fly and obviously it's like kind of a wordpress kind of setup and it's going to look generally the same um let's see we have a package we have a package for every business. Start small and scale effortlessly as you grow. Can Ice is the name of it. It's more than just blockchain. <laughs> it's enamored, <laughs> straightforward, and playfully. <laughs> well, they use AI and travel, of course. Uh, of course, of course. <clears throat> um, it creates the Twitter accounts and the and the names. You know, meet the team of Can Eyes. Well, to... Is there so the one I looked at? There was like two COOs and one ops person. Can Eyes is just awesome <laughs> in my daily life. <laughs> So they have a brand designer, a CEO, and an operations person. They're good to go. Yes. Uh, let's see. Here's your clients. Fortos, uh, produce original and exclusive content. Exist, build a UGC. These are the names. Exist is the name. <laughs> and they're just like, like pictures of people. <laughs> so, And if you refresh it again, what is our? We go from can eyes to WikXO. The, the wiki 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 xo let's let's, let's <laughs> go with that build a vertical brand is the tagline and you can go through there uh this was this is a pretty fun uh thing uh let's see if you go back to let's see let's go back to this x does not exist uh there's also let's see this wait, wait this rental does not exist i'm not going to click on the cat because i don't want to be um it's, it's you don't want to be a cat video on youtube no 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 the, 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 the this cat does not exist turns into like monsters sometimes and it's oh. very very disturbing uh let's see here's a huge three bedroom in williamsburg this this apartment does not exist <laughs> um <laughs> so it, it just like it looks like some airbnb uh listings um let's see all images by cc by nvidia via style gan so i don't think i think i'm pretty sure these pictures of the actual like apartment itself are generated like these are not real pictures uh, in any way of... it's not i'm guessing it's not like stock photography well, that which they is just... good because i i don't know how many i guess this is a four <laughs> this is a uh a, a four bedroom sail bay park loft style home wow so this x does not exist play with that i guess they are going to oh this resume does not exist is one I'm I'm bummed that I, I can't get this question does not exist to render. Oh really? Yeah, it's not loading. Yeah, some of them like I, this cat does not exist was uh stopped loading after a while. He needs back up again. Oh, I'm gonna click on it. Oh, it's just a cute kitten. Oh, Bradley. Bradley. I went to I went to this resume does not exist, and I got Bradley Mann's resume. Bradley is from Texas. What is this? But he's a female. What is happening here? It's like it's eating the thing. I, I don't know. Sorry, sorry about that. Oh no! Oh Where's no! Kitten? Why there's an ear over there? What is that? I don't know. I I clicked on it. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry, guys. Now that's burned into your brain. Uh, what else do you want to touch on here, Chilla? I'm just gonna start reading resumes. Um, <laughs> can I hire this person? Nope. Does not exist. That would be interesting. If you somehow linked. Created fake LinkedIn accounts mm-hmm. 
with the resume link to Ooh. like re- to render and mask behind this resume does not exist. And it, there, there is some uh, recruiting agency that's going to get in so much trouble over <laughs> this. Um, so I, actually, let's talk about the Apple event, things that we haven't touched on yet. Uh, I know we we kind of were, we were talking about it a little bit on um, uh, the pre-show uh, and everything. I, I just want to say I called it last week that it was going to be like six days of Apple announcements, yeah. like leading up to. We got hardware almost every day. Yeah, we got we got iPads, <laughs> we got uh, iMacs, we got all kinds of stuff. Yeah, what else? Did, we got something else too. We got AirPods. Uh huh. We got. What was new with the AirPods? There's a new case or something. The case is wirelessly charged. There's extra battery life. You can say, "Hey, you know who," um, and activate her or him uh, without having to tap. Um, and then I, can't, I think that was the main, main four or five things. Um, wh- I'm sorry. What did you want to touch on? So oh. we've covered the arcade. We've covered. Yeah. So you are you are interested in News Plus, and this is going to be. I mean, this is basically their integration of um, a texture, which was a program that it, it, yeah, it was advertised on a lot of podcasts that we listen to, um, where you know you paid ten dollars a month and you got you know all the magazine subscriptions digitally, right? So basically, they bought it and they integrated it into the News app as News Plus. It's going to be ten dollars a month. Is that right? We can all click, I think it's nine ninety nine. We we can all click a button and we can uh, uh, try it out for a month right now, right? For free. Mm-hmm. I'm interested to see, do they get more? Because I don't think they were able to carry the agreements forward from Texture. So they had to renegotiate a lot of the magazines. And I don't know how many of the magazines they were able to carry forward. If it was 100%, if it was 70%. But okay. it looks like all the big ones are there. But there's no back catalog for Nintendo Power. Oh, son of a bitch. <laughs> Wait, was, it, was the Nintendo Power original only part of Texture? No, I don't think it's gonna be around anymore. But that would be pretty awesome. Wouldn't that it? would be pretty awesome. Well, let's see if I go into. Technology. I'm interested to see because, to me, from what I'm seeing on some of this with like the animations and the cross linking, I feel like this is what the Apple Books was meant to be. Mm-hmm. And I'm hoping this bleeds over into their bookstore to kind of give you like the choose your own adventure with like videos and movies and all kinds of stuff, all kinds of multimedia content in a book mm-hmm. i i mean if you notice like the wired issue the right hand side was kind of animated the, the video on the national geographic front cover i feel like they're taking it to the next level and they're bringing forward items that should have been in the bookstore already and and again i'm just hoping this type of thing bleeds over mm-hmm. the one thing i am interested in too is if you look at some of the photography magazines they're like and get seventy dollars worth of free uh, filters and this, that, and the other. So, do you get that um, downloadable content from some of these? I don't know. T three is an awesome British magazine for looking at high cost tech stuff. Um, so, I don't know. So, it's, it's, I I feel like this. I feel like when we've been here before, right? We had newsstand several years ago that that that, that, that icon I could never even move into a folder on my on my folder or on my on my um I phone. Like I don't remember getting magazines out of there. I only remember getting books. That was where the books went for some reason. But that was also magazines. There was a point where I did subscribe to the digital edition of WWE magazine, and it would subs- it would download to that, and it looked like a newsstand, and, and and you know they did that whole metaphor, right? Um, I, but this is, I mean, yeah, it's a subscription. But that's not even again. Apple saying, "Hey, look at this new thing that we completely took from somebody else and making new to you." Um, I can't get excited about this because I have a stack of magazines sitting over there that I've never read. Well, you can't carry it, <clears throat> and this is where I go with like the whole Kindle versus paper book conversation. You can't take that stack of magazines everywhere you go. True, true. And also, like, the cost of having all those magazines. Again, the only, by the way, the uh, disclaimer, the only reason I have physical magazines here in the studio is because I had a lot of uh, American Airlines Sky Miles to spend and that you could do magazine subscriptions. So we're like, all right, let's have magazines for the office, I guess. Right? So, but even Wired. I, I just flipped through Wired for the first time, like, today, because I was curious. 
But, but now you can have it while you're waiting in line at the coffee shop. While you're, I know we were. I think Let's we were be talking honest. About it earlier. Now you have it within reach on the toilet. Yep. There you go. You can you can read. At, uh, we're talking about downtime. Let's be honest. That's right. the downtime chilla. But and that's where I feel like they did a good job. From what I saw in a, in a couple of the video clips, they did a good job. They up played it on the phone versus up playing it on the iPad. But obviously, it's going to transition to the iPad very right. well. Right. Of course. <clears throat> We we use our iPads primarily in the evenings for a lot of reading mm-hmm. around the house. Um, we use Kindles at the beach because you can't read your iPad in bright sunlight. Um, I don't know. I just it'll be interesting to see where they take this. The other interesting thing, and I don't know if we talked about it, was a lot of the TV content going cross platform to Roku and Fire mm-hmm. TV. I wonder, will they bring the News Plus service to other That'll be interesting. services? That will be interesting. I mean, and that was a lot of the, you know, the, it, was a, it was a really kind of curious presentation they did. Um, Alex had, had some thoughts as well. I wanted to get in here. Um, for one, like, Alex is in the chat room talking about how, he hey, he found some Mac, Mac uh, uh, magazines. That was nice. Uh, he says he's digging the News Plus service mostly from the standpoint of, cool, we're going to see some fun innovations in digital publishing with the magazines that are on board. But again, these are also like, you know, I don't think it's going to be so much I can put my magazine that I'm creating on here. It's still like, hey, we went to the big publishers kind of thing. It's something for them, right? Um, and you get some things like, you know, LA Times and, and, and the Wall Street Journal, and the, at least partially things like the Wall Street, Wall Street Journal, right? Um, so... Yeah, that was that was that. So so, moving on the TV, um, Alex is really excited about Fire TV. He's got one. You can get that on there now. He doesn't have to buy an Apple TV, right? Um, and he gets that kind of front end for things. Cool. Uh, smart TVs. What smart TVs and Roku's are supposed to be getting the the TV. Smart to- Smart TVs, Roku's, and Fire TV. You almost said, and I really wish it was smart toasters as well. Smart toasters. Smart toasters. Apple TV. Let's do this. Well, I get it on my Samsung refrigerator. With the... <laughs> yeah, exactly. No Android. Notice. No. I, okay. But they they updated the the music stuff. Technically, technically, Fire TV is a uh, Android device. I'm gonna disclaim that right there. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm I'm curious. <clears throat> I want to I want to see if it'll it'll download to my original Fire TV. We won't know until the fall. Right? I think when this all rolls out, right? Um, coming to Mac, Mac OS now, um, so it's going to be a more universal there. And they didn't sense. announce a price point on this one, did they? they did not, no, uh, TV Plus did not get a price point, but we got a lot of, you know, again, the upfronts kind of thing about, um, you know, I guess there was, I, I didn't stick around long enough. Um, I guess there was some footage from the shows afterwards, so which I haven't seen any of that yet. Uh, you know, amazing stories, something from M. Night Shyamalan. Uh, and, uh, it, you know, and, and, you know, a lot of people are involved. Oprah's doing two documentaries on here and they're talking about like her, I remember listening to her part and she's saying, Hey, this is the reason why this is important is because, you know, like 5 billion people have these in their pockets. So 5 billion people can open it up and watch this, which makes me wonder about that. So what is this going to cost? Or is it just going to be something that's included? Hey, we're Apple and here. I think I think there's going to be some that's included. I think there's going to be some that's that's pay. I think including it in a Apple Music subscription was weird for the little bit of stuff that they released there. I don't know. I, you kind of see that with like the the plan of the apps. Really? The, you, no, I'm at, I'm talking what uh, Google did with like some of the YouTube type stuff. Like you picked up some of the shows. You picked up music. Yeah, but, but okay, they they rolled two services together. You they they said, by the way, we'll give you YouTube Premium or YouTube Red or whatever it was called at the time uh, for having a music subscription. So I was like, oh okay, sure, right? It, it versus it was just it was it was it in Apple Music that you had to watch everything or in your TV app, and they saw that you had a music subscription. I, I again, I never hopped into it, so I didn't see how that formatted. What Apple Music? Yeah, the TV programs with Apple Music. They just showed up in the videos app. Okay, so they, they behaved like that, but they were included. Like the car, the, I watched Carpool Karaoke. Yeah, which like makes I, sense. That makes sense with Apple Music. I get that. Mm-hmm. But I don't know. It's it's one of those things. Um, let's see. We have an Apple Card. Uh, <laughs> I actually thought this. 
I thought it was pretty cool. And when you look as far as cards go, like the one percent cash back daily and the three percent off of Apple purchases, mm -hmm. the no late fees, the titanium card with no number, no signature, no it, CBB. It feels like it's just for the Apple generation. It it was it. I want to know how much that card costs because it can't be real titanium. <laughs> really? Um, but no, I mean, I thought it's a very cool concept. The, the experience when you, so when you think about, and I, I read this, I can't remember where I read it. I think it might've been on a Twitter account of someone off of Mac break weekly, but they said, think about the, accessibility features for for the handicapped and disabled community think of all of the features on ios and think of the experience of now signing up for a credit card with them mm -hmm. um it's unparalleled to anything you can do anywhere else um i i don't know i just i like what they did with it i like how they're handling it it doesn't seem so I, I don't feel like I'm getting, oh, come sign up for this card. We'll get you points and we're going to get you on multiple fees and subscription fees and this fee and that fee and everything else. I feel like they this is a card that they just want you to use. And I, it it makes me believe that if you could go to them as your bank, that it would be a positive experience uh, like for checking in savings and all of that kind of stuff like is Allison, this Allison his com in comments have has uh reservations about it being goldman sachs um you yeah. could you could say that about a nut you could say about any bank say that by about most banks and the fact that most banks can't front fully front for the like the credit side of it. So they usually have to partner. There's not many banks that are big enough to back, back the credit card industry. Like they're, they're typically backed by someone big like that. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be someone, I mean, that's, yeah. a, that's, you know, kind of a separate. It's, thing. A, it's a necessary evil. Yeah. Of sorts. So, I'm poking through the magazines right now. Sorry, still still poking through the magazines. You know what you're not going to get is that is that CD that comes with Linux format magazine. Well, and that's where I'm wondering: Are you going to get it like as a digital download? Well, thing? actually, as, as it is, I'm actually <clears throat> looking at the front of it, and it's saying free download of the all new Cubes 4.0 for uh, uh, Raspberry Pi. Right? Like, yeah, I mean, those they're they're already doing that. They're, they're not throwing those in as discs anymore. But when you buy that magazine in a store, a lot of times there is a CD. Mm -hmm. Like if you buy Mixmag, which I don't think is part of the subscription, which I wish it was, like Mixmag comes with a, C a copy of a CD mm -hmm. um, with music on it. So I, I hope they bring that, and I really hope that but they also, take the medium to the next but level. But also... It could be stuff that's included in the digital magazine as content that you play in the digital magazine. Um, and you're only paying $10 a month mm -hmm. versus $10 for an issue, right? Oop. So, I mean... I, I'm, I'm interested to see, do they open this up where someone like you or I, just like I can go publish my own book pretty easy. That would be curious, too. Can I go create my own magazine? Can I submit for putting my magazine, putting my Sorgatron Media Podcast magazine? I mean, I know <laughs> I know a lot of people that are in the iTunes Music Store. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. They went to a recording studio. They yep. got yep. They got their music so produced. Maybe and... they allow it because they're really big on this like curating, right? Mm -hmm. This machine learning, this curating idea. So you know, podcasts they do the same thing. Hey, anybody can come on here, but we're going to tell you what the good ones are. Right. Right. Same thing with the app store. Anybody can put a game in here. We're going to tell you what the good ones are. Yeah. And I think if you're if you're some of the first Wait. people to the platform that have the really slick multimedia approach to this, mm -hmm. I, I think you're going to 
get an audience, which in turn is going to get you paid. Oh man, Animal Tales has the puppy issue. <laughs> oh, I need to stop poking through this. Well, speaking of Alex Cars, you know he does some stuff. Chill. He does. He does stuff. He does stuff. He does media things. He should start a magazine. He should. <gasps> Alex Cars <clears throat> Media Magazine. That would be. That'd be something. Uh, but he's putting together the puzzle of design and media from branding. Well, hey, where are we at? Where are we at? Let's put it on me. We'll just have it on Chilla. Alex there. needs to come up with a site that builds this magazine does not exist. Ooh, there you go. <laughs> this or how about this Apple announcement doesn't exist? <laughs> That'd be perfect. But anyways, Alex is putting together the puzzle of design and media from uh, videos to to uh, logos to websites. So much more over there. You can check them out at alexcars.media, alex, K-A-H-R-S dot media to get started and see some of his great work over there. Uh, a great supporter of the show in the chat room and um, checking out, you know, and, and in general. He says he needs a bigger budget to start his own magazine. Well, there you go. Well, <laughs> well we start a Patreon and uh, and there you go. You know what? You can probably kickstart a magazine, right? These days? Well, here's the question is if you could come up with it enough content i think most people are just making a website <laughs> yeah if, if you can come up with a little bit of content get some advertising mm -hmm. and open up it's that my easy. book's author it's that easy <laughs> it just is like, i mean it is just not, like podcasting it is not hard in the well in the long run yeah i mean comparison right mm-hmm anyways but what's interesting is because it sounds like sorry and i don't mean to drag this on but it, it it sounds like they're paying by they're paying by the views back to the publisher. So if you can get eyes on your media, you're gonna get paid by Apple. Mm -hmm. And if you can say, "Hey, look, sorry, um, I got I got eyes and I got paid for my content in Apple," I think that's a big selling point to your media company, to your whatever, to your to your writing i just i view it as a big deal awesome hey we got a lot of stuff going on across the network of course pittsburgh current will be live on thursday morning at 10 a.m on uh on the pittsburgh current social media platforms check out that podcast recording and of course we have a lot of stuff going on across the network like i said uh including fishing without bait just launched today with sheena carroll and some music some live music recorded right there where you're sitting chilla uh, right here, just a little bit ago, uh, over there, Fishing Up Eight One Eighty Five. Our friends at Thrifty Podcast has a new episode. Our friends at Bold Sports have a new episode, and so much more. Comic Book Pit has a new episode from uh, last week that went up, and of course, uh, they'll be actually in here uh, scheduled to be in here Sunday to do some more live recording in studio, and they'll be streaming on the Comic Book Pit platforms as well. So, thank you, everybody, part of the network, doing some really awesome content. And uh, still rocking and rolling in here. John Chichilla is at chillatech.net. John Chichilla on the Facebook, chill on the Twitter. Yes. And uh, of course, please, uh, like I said, check out uh, Rogue Laser. Uh, laser. <laughs> and what's the last word here? <laughs> Rogue Lasers. Rogue Laser Grounds uh, over there at our friends at scarehouse.com. Uh, you can find more information on that. Like I said, I think that kicks off later this week. Um, and go say hi and shoot things and pew pew with others. Uh, so go check that out guys uh, but anyways thank you everything thank you everybody for joining us here in the chat room thank you producer Missy uh, for dealing with us all night and uh, thank you you've been our awesome chat room have an awesome week this show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.